السلام علیکم سعید وعلیکم السلام Could Sayyidi please elaborate more about the reality of sound and reality of Prophet Sallallahu voice with regards to the ability of the Sahaba Sallam to hear it? <clears throat> Alhamdulillah everything is about sound. So I think on those talks that we talked about everything is based on sound. And the, the power of sound that the one whom what Prophet heard no one can imagine. And what type of power that Allah describes, if we reveal our Qur'an which means if I speak to anyone they would be dust. Because people think for some reason Qur'an is like a book, if we send a book on somebody they're going to be in trouble. But Allah is saying in a different way, if I speak to anyone they will be dust. Not an angel, not a mountain, not a prophet, no one can take the speech of Allah except in Ayatul Kareem Allah describes Sayyidina Muhammad that we reveal unto him means I speak to him and he stands firm. So it means Allah created Prophet to take that frequency because this is now the world of light. That His light is capable of receiving that level of frequency. So anyone then studying Malakut and the world of light everything then makes sense. Can you send a higher frequency to something that's not capable of it? Basic what do they call that uh, Ahmad? Electronics? Like when the electronics and engineering schools they go and they put a little device, a circuit and say, oh, I want to send 220,000 volts to it, is that okay? <laughs> no, they blow it up and fry it. So everything has a capacity in which they can flow energy through, even in your home your 110 lines. So imagine somebody has like a what is like a 20,000 or 100,000 volts and they want to plug it into your home lines, it will immediately melt the lines within the house and set the house on fire. This is dunya. Allah just said, for your plastic wires that can't take anything, you think my words don't have a power? Is there anything that can been created by Allah but doesn't have that capacity? Allah knows what He made. He didn't put that level of a transistor in any creation. What do they call it? A capacitator? Transformer. Transformer. Nothing in there has, has the ability to contain Allah's speech, Allah's power, Allah's might and qudra but He made a soul anciently. For only that purpose, I created you to be known. I created you from my love oceans because it's a, it's a divine reality and Allah loves Himself. And He made the best of character, the best of representation and wanted to be known by it so He put that transformer inside. And I can only speak to this, so He's the machine language. Only Allah can speak to this transformer and this is the only thing that can understand. So computer people we've described this in many different talks in different directions. It's called machine language in computing. Nobody can type and compute binary code. So you need machine language, you need actual device that, that understands one and zero, one and zero. One and zero is actually on and off, on and off. So imagine an ocean of energy in which Allah hits, it comes up the energy and then it drops to be nothing, hits it, nothing. So there's up in realities that unbeknownst to anyone there's an ocean of the kalima in which La ilaha illallah is continuously hitting Muhammadur Rasulullah 
and it goes up as an energy comes down, goes up as an energy comes down, goes up as an energy and comes down. That like the heartbeat of the entire created creation. La ilaha illallah is the one and only. Muhammadun Rasulullah is a nuqt, continuously sparking its energy to go up and then off, off. So this is like a pulse but of a strength and reality that can't be understood, can't be comprehended by the mind. So everything is the sound. What Prophet heard, nothing and nothing in creation can understand it. And what the companions achieved and the station that the companions achieved, what makes them to be kiram and honoured is that they heard the voice of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why that maqam can't be achieved by knowledges, that's a maqam in which their soul dressed by it, blessed by it. And that would give them their nobility. So then Allah must have created their souls with such a high level as a transformer within their reality to actually hear Prophet and then to believe and once they believe they receive the full capacity of the charge. So yeah is everything is, is based on sound. And that's why we know the science of it, everything manifesting then has a light, that light has a sound and a vibration. So before people are just thinking our people are manifesting, then the science of atoms and quantum came and said, no actually all these have atoms. These atoms are actually lights and these lights are actually sounds, there's a vibration making this light, this light becoming an atom, these atoms moving. So everything links from the form and its end result is sound. That means then if you change and alter the sound, you can alter the form. So in last days they'll have sound weapons. Where they'll put out devices that begin to manipulate the form of people and burn them from inside based on sound. So all of those are known. So the one whom comes towards Allah dhikrullahi akbar. Why? Because the dhikr of Allah is not from this world. You're actually taking sounds from paradise beyond paradises. It's not even imaginable in paradises, from realms that can't be understood. As soon as you make dhikr and salawat, imagine then the energy and the transformation within the soul and then the soul becomes luminous and powerful and begins to alter the physicality. And most of what Allah has granted as a gift to the soul is not released it to the physicality because He doesn't trust us. Right? So your father has a billion dollars but he only gave you ten. So somebody else has to come as a shaykh and keep telling you, don't worry your daddy's very rich. You're gonna get it one day, don't worry. He said, no, you got only got ten dollars, I didn't get anything. But Allah just said, no, what you've been given is you're rich. That's why we described the graph, the world is saying you're nothing and the guy who owns Twitter is everything. But a day is going to come where Allah will flip it and say, no, no, now see who believes in the Lord of might and majesty. When that one who has that Twitter, he's in the depth of despair. And the one who saw himself as having nothing in dunya or of the kings in heaven, when Allah described them in Surah Yaseen, some they have arsh. On Yawm al-Mashad Allah will reveal to them, this is your throne. Sit here relax while I deal with these people. Then Allah describes some of them have kursi, some of them have couches that they sit on couches reclining and others their station they have at least a chair. 
From what? So means these are the immensity of Allah going to give to this creation and that they've been put into their account because the Ahlul Dhikr and, uh, and Ahlul Muhabbat and they praise upon Allah and love Sayyidina Muhammad But in the event of difficulties if Allah won't and begin to open that account we said before the believers have a fire that come from their eyes like a dragon where dragons are more scared of them that their eyes emit a tremendous fire that come out. Anything look into their face will be burned except for believers whom will reach a state of ecstasy just by the nazar of those eyes. Means that Allah is great and what Allah has bestowed upon the soul and, and the reality of dhikr but He knows, He says, why I give that to you now? If I give that to you now as soon as you walk out shaitan is going to fool you, take you to be his servant and be using all of your abilities on his, on his kingdom. And that's what we talked about in other talks, that's all he knows. He knows he has no power. His power is the influencing of those whom are very powerful. وَلَكَ الْكَلَامْ بَنِي Adam That we have honoured Adam and Eve, they have so much power, shaitan grabs them and manipulates them to take their power, their blessings and put it out onto people to destroy more people. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, will Mahdi salam enter our physical world as a wave reality? As a wave reality Sayyidina Mahdi salam is already here, why would he enter into the world? He's already here as a wave reality, means that which is eternal is always here. So that which is eternal and reached to eternity is always here, awliya have always been here. Back in time, forward in time there is no time that all the Prophets are always here. They're of an eternal reality. That's why then you have to get two books from levels of the heart because that's all in levels of the heart. That each Prophet is not from Noah coming salam only from I don't know how many thousands of years ago. But as soon as you read about Prophet will ask Satan and no, go and teach my students, go teach my nation. And his responsibility is to inspire your heart that, no my message is an eternal message, Allah's message is eternal, build your ship. Your ship is your soul, you're going to be tested with faith, you're going to build something where people think that, what are you building for? There's no flood coming, there's no disaster coming, there's no difficulty coming and you just keep building, building, building until your ship is ready to sail. And the world will see the difficulties come but either way your ship is sailing in faith, it's filled with faith, it's been tested with faith. So of course everything's eternal. That's what we said when you love Sayyidina Mahdi salam, believe, make sure your house is stuck, uh, stockpiled with supplies, get yourself your Imam Mahdi boots, things for difficulty coming, proof to yourself, you believe difficulty is coming then he's arrived in your heart. And that's all that's important, we're not a people who want to see destruction on the earth, Nobody, nobody's going to survive that, many families will lose everything. So that's not something that anyone wants. But what you want is the perception of this dunya to be destroyed in your eyes and in your heart. The look at it for what it is, the abode of suffering and difficulty and despair and the amount of people being tortured and abused and uh, neglected and all of its difficulties. When you believe and then you believe in the loved ones of the heavens that that binary code become more and more layl. When it drops down what you're going to see is the power. Then you see the, these men of power, these souls of power, even the ladies of power, the noble souls of the… of Sayyidina Khadija to Qubra, of course they're all visible. Sayyidina Zainab all of them are visible. When the negativity drops, 
the immensity of the oceans of power. And these are the souls from the oceans of power that Allah release upon the servants that they send their tajalli onto you. That's what we said when we're doing our birthdays and celebrations and wiladat of very, very holy souls. Their souls are coming and, and spending that time with us, dressing us, our family and our loved ones from their tajallis and from their gifts in Divinely Presence. So this way is ba based entirely on malakut. We don't care for anything from this dunya understanding, we're not a people of the dunya tafsir. This is the interest of only the malakut, the world of eternity and what's the eternal message and blessing for us inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah See, what are, what is the reality of death before death? Shaykh, you gotta get three books from Timeless Reality. That you, you gotta buy three books of Timeless Reality and give them one to yourself and two to other people. That is the whole binary code to lose yourself, to die before you die, to become nothing and, uh, and that's the whole understanding. That if you're loving, loving your life too much and you just want to live forever then how are you going to reach any reality? But if you enter into a state of layl and to be nothing and to shut off and to cut off then we said that this life is, is dying for you. And we just described also that the state of everything and look at the, the, the horrors of everything and the suffering of everyone and uh, it loses its flavor and you kind of continuously do that, continuously do that until you can lose its flavor within your heart. Doesn't mean that you're not going to have any dunya but it has nothing to do in your heart. Allah may for your image have many different things surrounded by you. The tariqah is very rich. So anyone coming to tariqah thinking they're going to find a bunch of poor people, no Allah is Allahu al qani ana faqib Allah ta'ala wa Allahu al qani is given the entire wealth of heavens and earth in the hands of awliya. And they make du'a and the treasures of the earth can come up. So they're by no means poor. So this is not about the, a group of people who are in abject poverty because uh, how can poor do anything? But they're rich in Allah's way, they're extremely rich in Allah's way. Means that in their heart and in their training Allah trained them that, is this coming into your heart? And if so then they required more training. And when it's not in their heart then they become custodians of Allah's wealth. So where was that? And because tariqah has very specific surahs to understand was in Sayyidina Yusuf right? That was one of the big custodians that Allah used as an example because it's a tariqah surah. The twelfth surah is the, the entry level for hajj students that you're going to be taken from your dad. So they don't care who your dad is, how big a shaykh he is, when you put into the custody of the shaykh he's going to throw you in a hole. When you go into that hole you know that you're isolated, you'll be cut off from everything and as a result the one whom is responsible for you will take you out of that hole and take you towards your guidance. And as a result you, are, you have an allegiance to that one who's taken you out then he sells you to the king. So they sold Sayyidina Yusuf who was a Prophet of Allah and they sold him to Malik al-Aziz. Why? Sifat al-Aziz is <laughs> nothing can come against Allah's Aziz. So it means this king who's Malik al-Aziz that he has a full authority. And as a result of being in now this heavenly kingdom environment, Allah testing him. So why all of the difficulty with that uh, audience of women? Because the women represented dunya, that all of dunya was throwing itself at him and Allah testing him because now there's going to be a big opening. Are you going for the dunya? Or are you going for my realities that I want to dress you? 
until the running, cutting and all of these difficulties until the last case he was alone the dunya was going to grab him and make him to fornicate and immediately Allah saved him with the vision of Sayyidina Jibra'il which appeared to him that, hold on you're a Prophet of Allah immediately turned his face and ran. As he ran the dunya grabbed his back and he came before the, the court, they entered into the situation and they said, were you going after this dunya? And he said, no, 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 God forbid. And he said, look if, if I was attacked from the front then I was going after dunya but I actually was running away from her and my back was torn. At that time when that trial ended before the king, the words in Ayatul Kareem in which Allah described, at that time Sayyidina Yusuf understood that I have to go into seclusion. And he asked, Ya Rabbi, jail is better for me than what this dunya has and send me to jail. Because the first hole Allah threw him, the jail he subjected himself to isolate from the material world. Understanding that this position and this station that Allah wants to grant is not something easy. Everything of dunya will be coming towards you. At that time he was subject to going and incarcerating in jail in which he isolated himself for seven years from people. When he came out what happened? He became the treasure the, the treasure of finance for all of Egypt and which all the wealth which e Egypt at that time was like the conquerors of the entire earth. He became the finance minister for that entire reality. That was his dunya station and then when his father came made sujood who was the Prophet of Allah kissed his feet and realize today you have been dressed by the station that you told me that the sun, the moon and the eleven planets are subject to you. Means not only on his earth he was the king of all the finance of that world but in the heavens and his spiritual soul was in control of the sun, the station of the sun, he was in control of the station of the moon and eleven planets were under his authority and as a result the Prophet of Allah kissed his feet that this station of yours is, is immense. So no, the Qur'an is filled with realities but people don't understand them. InshaAllah Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon We'll leave you with that thought in your mind inshaAllah. <laughs> Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. إلى شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى صحابه الكرام وعلى مشايخنا في طريقتنا الشوندية العليا وسائر وسادتنا وسيد الفقيه الفاتحة